Lex Luger and Bruiser Brody uh, in the cage match. You were the one who officiated yes. it. But uh, before I ask you about the match, give me your impressions of uh, rookie Lex Luger, uh, Bruiser Brody, who was a veteran by that point, where those two guys were in the career and what you thought about them. Well, Bruiser Brody spent the bulk of his time in Japan and was a big star. And he was a little intimidating. He wasn't hard to work with. He was just Bruiser Brody. <clears throat> and after being a big star, uh, in Japan for so many years and he started coming to back to the United States and working here and there. Uh, he wasn't hard to work with at all, but he was, you know, uh, had a big personality and, uh, and Lex Luger had just started in the business. I was there when we trained him. We trained him at championship wrestling from Florida here. Matt Suda trained Lex Luger. He trained Hulk Hogan. Um, he got me sent to Japan. I was uh, one of his favorite referees. So I did, uh, I refereed uh, the match, Fujinami and Ric Flair, 65,000 people at the Tokyo Dome. It was like 92 or something. Uh, was spectacular for me. Tokyo is one of my favorite cities. Um, so those two guys, and uh, they, they put them together in that cage match. And it was a bad booking. It was, they should have never put Lex Luger, who's only been around for about a year. Uh, I was in the dressing room when we came up with this name, Lex Luger. We wanted to come up with a name. So this is his first TV appearance. So here we are, the bookers here, Masuda, uh, Dusty, Eddie Graham, uh, Bill Alfonso's referee. And they were, what can we name him? And Mike Graham said, something powerful, like a, like a gun, like a 357 or a, a bolt action machine or something like a Luger. And then they liked the Luger. And, he, and somebody said, Lex Luger, Lex, that's got a kick. And they love that name. So we came up with that name. So anyway, we were, at, he had trained for a year and he was an athlete. He was a football player and so on. And a good looking kid. He had that good body and everything, but he never was a class A worker like Barry Windham. He had to work hard to, you know, do what he did. It didn't come naturally. Mm -hmm. uh, but he got over. So they at the first year, they were hand -picking, hand picking his opponents and stuff, you know, trying to build him. They wanted to build him as a champion and so on and so on. So it was a bad booking because they should have never put Lex Luger and Bruiser Brody in a cage match together because with, uh, with Brody's flamboyant personality and Lex Luger being green, uh, they were handpicking his opponents. He was winning every match. You know, it was a, it was just a bad booking. That's what led to that finish. Yeah. You know, yeah. I'll give you more details. Yes. Well, um, I remember many years ago as a kid reading about this uh, match, and there were rumors going around at the time. There was finger, you know, razor blades under the fingernails, the whole bit. You know, it seemed to get like bigger and bigger and bigger. But as far as the yeah. match goes, what was originally meant to happen, and what did happen? Well, originally they were supposed to have a cage match and uh, we were going to end up in some type of DQ or something because we didn't want to beat Lex Luger because he's new in the business. We were pushing him and we couldn't ask Bruiser Brody to do a job for this young kid, you know, so we would do some type of DQ. So the match starts and Lex Luger is used to working with these hand-picked opponents and usually him 80% of the match and give the guys 20%. Uh but Brody had different ideas and usually like the senior in the ring would lead the match and call the match. And of course that was Bruce Brody. He had been in the business 20 something years and a big superstar and a great athlete and he looked great. And Luger didn't realize uh, that. And Luger was trying to do stuff on his own. He was, you know, and, and uh, Brody was waiting for him to listen to him and say, Hey, just listen to me, kid. You know, but uh, it was like a deer in the headlights. He couldn't really comprehend uh, what was going on. And Luger tried punching him and so on. And and, and uh, Bruce Brody wouldn't sell for him because it wasn't the right thing to do. Listen to me, kid, and I'm going to make you look like a superstar. And then we're having our match. But Luger couldn't do that. And he, he got scared. We spooked him. We spooked him there. <laughs> and he said, Fonzie. You know, I'm the referee. He said, Fonzie, you won't sell. What do, what do I do? I'm, you know, he didn't say I'm scared. But he said, hey, but I don't know what to do. Brody wouldn't sell any of my stuff. And he's a big star by now. You know, every year in the business, we're pushing him really hard. 
And I said, well, uh, once you grab me, throw me against the cage and I'll disqualify you for manhandling the referee. But you make it look good. Throw me hard against the cage and you pissed off at the referee and I'll disqualify you. So that's what happened. He grabbed me right away. Threw me against the cage. I took the bump and I came up ringing the bell, ringing the bell, disqualification. You can't touch the referee. And as soon as the bell rung, Lex Luger climbed over the cage, climbed over the cage, went to the dressing room, grabbed his satchel and bags and stuff, jumped in his car and drove back to Tampa. <laughs> he was that scared. He thought Luger, he thought Brody was going to beat the fuck out of him. He thought Brody was mad at him. He thought Brody, he didn't know what to think. But Brody had it all along in his mind. Hey, I'm going to do my stuff. I'm going to beat the hell out of this kid and then give him his shine. And then we're going to the finish, which was the right thing to do. But Luger just couldn't comprehend. He was so young in the business. It was a bad booking. It was a bad booking. They should have never booked that match. And you never know who's giving advice to Luger behind the scenes. 